This video outlines some canopy management options for Hass and Shepherd orchards planted at conventional spacings on the east coast of Australia where trees don't have fruit on the tree all year. It complements the video called Principles of Avocado Canopy Management. You should consider what canopy management strategy you're going to use at the same time as you're deciding your tree spacing. The two go hand in hand. Canopy management is a question of horses for courses because each orchard is different. Always bear in mind that flowers and fruit are only born on canopy that is exposed to direct sunlight and that sunlight penetrates less than one metre into an avocado canopy. However, with good canopy management, you can create multiple hectares of exposed canopy surface within one hectare of orchard. Trees need to be reduced and maintained at a manageable size to improve light penetration and spray coverage, arrest yield and quality decline, and improve safety and harvesting efficiency. You will know when pruning is overdue, when trees are too tall and or too dense to get effective spray coverage, your rejects are increasing and your fruit packout percentage is declining. Your yields are declining as leaves are disappearing from the inner part of the tree canopy. Picking costs per tonne are going up because yield is declining and pickers find it too hard to reach the fruit. Or picking is becoming more dangerous. Here are some tips when it comes to canopy management. Experienced growers agree that doing some pruning is better than doing nothing even if it's not the right approach to start with. Apart from tree shaping in the first couple of years, start major canopy management in year four or five. Avocado trees grow fast, so you need to remove 15 to 25% of the canopy every year. Less than this is usually counterproductive. Aim to develop a tree that is narrower at the top than the bottom and remove shoulder branches that prevent sunlight reaching the lower canopy. Keep trees no taller than about 5 metres. When pruning, consider the movement of cherry pickers in the tree. Imagine them as lifts in a multi-storey building. They will need free vertical movement at various points around each tree. The interrow should be kept free of branches and be about 2.5 metres wide. This is important to allow light to reach down the sides of the trees, allow easy passage for machinery and assist spray penetration. Avocado branches sunburn as easily as our skin. Major limb removal will expose previously shaded bare branches to sunburn. Paint these surfaces prior to pruning or within an hour of cutting. Follow up after the main prune is called maintenance pruning and this is essential to maintain the intent of the main prune. Maintenance pruning can include removing undesirable regrowth such as water shoots, trimming off stubs left by mechanical hedging, thinning out coppicing regrowth, attending to misses in the main prune, and creating windows into the canopy for light penetration. Aim to have dappled light reach the orchard floor under the trees. This is sometimes referred to as leopard spots. About 20% of the ground should receive sunlight. The following are some of the mainstream options. The first is selective limb removal. Develop a tree that consists of four or five main branches. Once the tree reaches a mature size, select and remove one of these branches each year by cutting it off about 50 to 75 centimetres from the main trunk. Leaving this stub is important in order to grow a replacement branch. Selecting and shaping this replacement branch is an essential part of the maintenance pruning. This option lets light into the canopy and after a four or five year period, the entire canopy has been replaced and therefore rejuvenated. Use a chainsaw or a mechanical grab mounted on an excavator. The latter is safer and quicker. Take care not to create an open vase shaped tree. The second option is creating a permanent backbone or scaffold. This involves developing a tree that consists of three to six main branches to retain as the permanent backbone or scaffold of the tree. Six branches for trees on very wide spacing, down to three for high density. These branches can be shortened, but never removed. Subsequent annual pruning is selective and involves removing relatively small branches to allow as much light as possible to reach the remaining secondary branches. These secondary branches form the bearing units. 
compared with the previously described practice of removing a major limb each year, the windows of light created by the annual prune in this option are smaller, and there is less risk of sunburn or excessive vegetative regrowth. However, this option may be more labour intensive and require more skill and time for choosing which branches to prune. Another option is big trees with little trees, also known as columns. This is a remedial technique suited to large trees, but could be applied to developing trees too. Select three to five major branches that are well spaced apart and shorten them. Remove all the others. Each retained branch is selected to act as a separate little tree or column and is maintained by secondary pruning to be illuminated from all sides. Foliage on these remaining branches is kept short. The aim is to keep each column of foliage ideally no more than about two meters in diameter. Branch selection and subsequent pruning is conducted so that direct sunlight reaches the top, middle and lower parts of the canopy to develop flowers and bear fruit. This option is neatly described in a verse written by Colin Partridge. Big trees should have smaller trees, with windows all around them. The little trees can bear lots of fruit because windows let much more light in. The fourth option is mechanical hedging and cutting windows. Although less popular than it used to be, mechanical hedging is attracting renewed interest because of the scarcity and high cost of labour. Trees are mechanically hedged along the hedgerow to give them an American barn shape. This is quick but indiscriminate, so requires a greater amount of follow-up maintenance pruning. Subsequent regrowth from the pruned face creates a dense outer hedge, which necessitates cutting a few windows, roughly one metre in diameter, into each side of the hedgerow to provide better access for light, pickers and sprays. Mechanical hedging also creates many stubs, which can not only be sharp and dangerous, but they also coppice, throwing out a mass of new shoots. Most need to be removed. Although hedging requires more follow-up, it is a quick, low-cost means of reducing the size of overgrown trees. And after hedging, it is easier to see where the next cuts need to be. Staghorning is another option, but is not generally recommended because staghorn trees can take two to five years to get back into production. However, it may be useful where the block has been badly affected by flooding or Phytophthora root rot. If you staghorn for these reasons, then you must also improve drainage at the same time. Tree removal is also no longer recommended, but if you find that your original spacing was too close, it may be necessary. It is important to remove alternate rows before the trees are touching across the row, or it will take much longer for the orchard to return to a reasonable yield because the inner canopy will have lost most of its leaf. Secondly, try and retain the same row direction, or it could necessitate moving irrigation laterals and submains. Thirdly, in tropical and subtropical regions, tree removal carries the risk of Felinus noxious, brown root rot, developing in the cut stumps and spreading to remaining trees. There are also some additional considerations when it comes to shepherd. Commence pruning shepherd at a younger age than has. Keep trees more open, and after harvest, hold off pruning till autumn, when the weather will be cooler and the regrowth less vigorous. Selective limb removal is suitable in combination with window pruning, but mechanical hedging is not recommended. The following two options are not recommended. Open vase shaped trees are not recommended because the large empty space created in the middle of the tree will soon fill with vigorous new unproductive growth and shade the lower canopy more than before. Flat topping is also not recommended, especially in trees where the inner canopy is already sparse. Apart from the sunburn risk, the cut surface will soon produce a thicket of regrowth mainly water shoots, which will make the canopy below even darker and unproductive. In summary, canopy management is complex and the best canopy management approach will vary from orchard to orchard. Remember that the main aim is to get a greater surface area exposed to direct sunlight. This video has outlined some mainstream approaches. 
check out the online best practice resource and study the wealth of information generated by the Canopy Management Review in 2022. And secondly, get in touch with other growers in your region and ask if you can discuss canopy management with them in the field.